Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Good day folks, we are glad to be back and here is the news for today. Former U.S. Ambassador meets Myanmar Junta leader. Former U.S. Ambassador Bill Richardson held talks with Myanmar Junta leader Ming Oholeng on the COVID-19 situation in the country. State media said a rare meeting for a military chief who has faced diplomatic isolation since he launched a coup in February. State-run Mirwardi TV showed Richardson sitting down for talks with Ming Oholeng in a diplomatic guest office in Naipitiao. Myanmar has been in turmoil since the military chief seized power from a civilian government following elections that were won by Aung San Suu Kyi's ruling party, but the military said had been fraudulent. Thousands had been detained, many more have left the country, and insurgencies have flared in border regions. Myanmar state-run MRTV said Ming Holain and Richardson talked about COVID-19 control and treatment, schools openings and assistance from the United States for vaccinations. Ahead of his trip, Richardson said he was on a humanitarian mission. Richardson was earlier on an international panel set up by Myanmar to advise on the Rohingya crisis but he resigned in 2018, saying Aung San Suu Kyi of lacking moral leadership. <laughs> Travelers happy to be back as Thailand reopens. Crowds of travelers went through disease control and document checks at Thailand's Suvarnabhumi Airport as Thailand reopened to tourists for quarantine-free travel. I think, uh, no need to Under the new national program, arriving passengers must be vaccinated, spend their first night in the pre-approved hotel and receive a negative COVID-19 test before they are able to travel freely in the country. The Southeast Asian nation approved visitors for more than 60 countries including China and the United States. Special conditions, the corona kept me away from Thailand. Thailand's finance ministry predicts 180,000 foreign arrivals this year and 7 million next year, compared with some 40 million in 2019. The majority of Thailand's 1.9 million infections and more than 19,000 coronavirus related fatalities have been recorded since April. Around 42% of the 72 million population has been vaccinated. Protester dress up as Pokemon call in Japan to drop call at COP26. Protesters dressed as a Pokemon Pikachu danced by the river Clyde as they called on Japan to stop burning coal at home and financing it abroad. Japan, with its nuclear power industry in crisis since the Fukushima disaster, has turned to coal to fill the gap and is building seven large new coal fired power stations. The COP26 presidency, the UK government, calls countries to phase out coal, uh, even domestically. But Japanese government doesn't have any plans to phase out coal domestically. And they, uh, more, moreover, they are still expanding coal-fired power stations domestically. So it's, it's against climate pledge and it's against climate science so we demand Japanese government to stop uh, financing new coal-fired power stations overseas and um, we ask them to plan coal phase out by 2030 at latest. Japan and its G20 counterparts committed to stop overseas funding for coal by the end of this year but set no date for or phasing out coal power promising only to do so as soon as possible. Delegates from all over the world are meeting in Glasgow to try to keep alive a target of keeping global warming at 1.5 Celsius above pre-industrial levels, the limit scientists say would avoid its most destructive consequences. Meeting the 1.5 Celsius goal will require a surge in political momentum and diplomatic heavy lifting to make up for the insufficient action and empty pledges that have characterized much of the global climate politics. The conference needs to secure more ambitious pledges to further cut emissions, lock in billions in climate finance, and finish the rules to implement the Paris Agreement with the unanimous consent of the nearly 200 countries that signed it. French President welcomes Vietnam's Prime Minister in Paris. French President Emmanuel Macron welcomed Vietnamese Prime Minister Pan Minh Chin at Dili Palace for a working lunch. Chin, who took office in April, also met with French Prime Minister Jean Castex to discuss cooperation on COVID-19 and the fight against climate change. Vietnam and France are strategic partners in the Indo-Pacific region and share economic interests. 
During his first official abroad, Chin also attended Vietnam Bamboo's AOA signing of a Memorandum of Understanding with a joint venture between General Electric and Safran SA for a purchase of aircraft engines and equipment worth up to 1.73 billion euros or $2 billion. Thailand's international airports reopens for fully vaccinated tourists. Tourists began arriving at Thailand's international airports as the country reopened for fully vaccinated tourists. It was quite a good chance to, to come to this house now. And in Europe, uh, as you know, um, it's quite cold, so we decided to go here. And it was just randomly picked the first flight. As we saw that it's reopened, we just picked this flight and were quite surprised that we were the fl first flight which, which arrived in Thailand. Thank you very much. You're welcome, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> Tourists are required to present a talent pass to health officers and immigration upon arrival. The document comes in QR code form which aims to replace the certificate of entry or COA given by the Thai embassy or consulate. Definitely, <laughs> definitely diving because Koh Tao is just incredible for that. And then of course the food, the food is insane. So Bangkok's street food uh, really surprised me because I've never had that and uh, I'm very looking forward to that again. So before flying, you need to apply to, for a COE. Uh, so you need to have your insurance, you need to have your uh, quarantine booking. So right now there is only one night, so it's much easier than before. Before it was, uh, at first it was 14 nights, then it dropped to seven on only one night. So that's definitely easier if you want to go to Thailand. Among the Asia Pacific's most visited countries, Thailand has lost about 3 million tourism dependent jobs and an estimated 50 billion dollars a year in revenue due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As the main Thailand international airport, we are excited to welcome tourists again. The slowdown, however, was not entirely due to weak demand, but also Thailand's tight restriction, which included 14 days hotel quarantine requirements, COVID-19 tests, and health insurance coverage of up to $100,000. Business organization noticed China International Import Expo as platform for openness and economic opportunity in China. As the fourth China International Import Expo kicks off in Shanghai, a number of foreign business leaders and officials said that the openness and size of China's markets, alongside its global contribution in development, offer great opportunities for win-win results. Featuring a wide range of industries, the China International Import Expo has attracted around 3,000 offline exhibitors from 127 countries and regions to take part in its business exhibition, which is scheduled to run until November 10 at Shanghai's National Exhibition Center. So for Singapore enterprises, China. Three domestic organizations and 58 countries from five continents, especially those involved in the Belt and Road Initiative, will also participate in the online country exhibition, which promotes increased collaboration around the world. And build up new business relationship with Chinese companies. The Cuban enterprises have participated in the China International Import Expo for the fourth consecutive year this time, which serves as an excellent platform for the Caribbean country to explore market shares and build up a product brands under a global spotlight. And because of its open policy, I think that Chinese contribution lies not only in its own development, but also in the common development with the rest of the world, the development towards mutual benefits and win-win results. Hungary and South Korea building on a strategic investments in Hungary. South Korean President Moon Jae-in met with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban in Budapest ahead of a V4 summit with the presidents of Poland, Czech Republic and Slovakia on Thursday. The V4, by harnessing its talented workforce and geographical position of bridging East and West, is emerging most dynamically in Europe. South Korea, powered by its cutting-edge manufacturing sectors, hopes to grow together with the V4. I hope we can jointly expand our reach to the global market beyond Europe. Delivering a speech at the V4 South Korea Business Forum, Moon Jae-in said that Cooperation between the V4 countries and South Korea was especially close in the field of new technologies such as hydrogen energy, biohealthcare, and automobile industries. He stressed what he called the importance of proposals the countries have to work in together in the post-pandemic era. Second, post 
Our trade volume with South Korea has grown tenfold in the past 10 years, and even during the pandemic, it broke records, despite the pandemic. Victor Orban said investments had grown rapidly even during the pandemic and South Korea was Hungary's fourth largest investor. He also said the two countries agreed to raise their relations in a strategic partnership, including building a South Korean university campus in Budapest. Today the president and I have decided to raise our friendly relations one level higher to a strategic level, to strategic relations. And apart from economics, we will extend it to science, research and education as well. We have started talks about creating a serious and large university campus in Budapest. Megkezdtük a tárgyalásokat egy komoly nagy koreai egyetemi kampusz létrehozásáról Budapesten. Moon Jae-in also later read at the memorial of the victims of the deadly Mermaid boat accident on the Danube in 2019. 25 South Korean tourists and two Hungarian crew members died out of 35 people on board. The vessel in what is regarded as the worst disaster on the Danube in more than half a century. The tourist boat collided with a large Swiss river cruiser, the Viking Saiging, in heavy rain on May 29, 2019 and sank in less than a minute. State Department highlight challenges from Ukraine, Taiwan, Sudan and China. Should I walk into the middle of a conflict? U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will meet Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba in Washington. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said amid what he called ongoing Russian aggression towards Ukraine. Next, we are pleased to announce... In a wide-ranging news briefing, Price also said Washington was carefully reviewing the joint investigation by the United Nations and Ethiopia that accused all sides of the conflict in Tigray of torturing and killing civilians, carrying out gang rapes and making arrests on the basis of ethnicity. Price called the report published sobering account of serious human rights abuses and violations by all parties to the conflict. ...and support for Ukraine's independence, its sovereignty and its territorial integrity, uh, including in the face of ongoing Russian aggression. Price said the United States also called for the armed forces of Sudan to release all detained civilian leaders and protest organizers detained since a military takeover on October 25th. Among those detained is Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok, who has been under house arrest in the capital Khartoum since being toppled by military chief general Abdel Fattah al-Burhan in a coup that derailed a transition to civilian rule and led to a Western aid freeze. Price also said in a briefing the United States urged China not to restrict access and movement for journalists reporting on the next year's Winter Olympics in Beijing. The Foreign Correspondents Club of China this week said it was concerned about the lack of transparency from the Games organizers. Price said at a regular press briefing that the Arch People Republic of China's officials not to limit freedom of movement and access for journalists and to ensure that they remain safe and able to report freely, including the Olympic and the Paralympic Games. ...committed to our One China policy, which uh, itself uh, is guided by the six assurances, the three joint communiques, uh, and the Taiwan Relations Act that I mentioned earlier. Thank you for watching, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you again.